Steve uh, Knight's an extraordinarily talented writer, and I was just taken with the with the characters and with the character of uh, Adam, uh, you know, a, a man who has uh, had success in the past, tremendous failure, and uh, has disappeared from the face of the earth and come back and tried to recapture something from before uh, and discovering that he can only do it with the help of other people, which is something that in his narcissism and egotism he hadn't uh, he hadn't bargained hadn't bargained on it's a wonderful redemption story about a man kind of coming back to grips with uh, with being an adult like what's required to to actually really succeed in life not just in one specific part of your profession I mean, Adam is not an immediately likable person. You know, now you put uh, Bradley Cooper in it and our sympathies are sort of immediately with him. And then you're really asking yourself, I wonder if my sympathy should be with him. He's, um, he seems to be someone who's really only cares about himself and is only concerned with whatever he personally is concerned with. Um, but really, that's the trajectory of the story is that way that someone who's had a dark past and has been struggling with how to be a... Uh, a mature adult uh, comes to grips with, uh, you know, that moment in your life where you're either going to become one thing or, or you have an opportunity to become something else. And, uh, you know, and through Sienna's characters, you know, through Helene and all the other people around him who are rooting for him and trying to help him, even though he maybe doesn't deserve it, um, you know, he, he comes slowly to a realization that there may be more in life than just looking after his own selfish interests. Yeah, I think Bradley's a really wonderful actor. He's very, very smart, a uh, very intelligent man, um, and he sort of understood the complexity of it. I felt that he would really understand what the character was going through and how difficult it is to give up on your obsessions and addictions and, and, um, and how hard it is to kind of take that next step. Uh, and, and, you know, when we're trying to do that within a world that is entertaining and in the sense that it's um, compelling in a world that I didn't know a whole lot about beforehand, which is, you know, the world of professional kitchens and the people who work in them. And getting to the, the more research I did in it, the more I thought that Bradley was actually the right, absolutely the right choice for it. There's a complexity, a sort of a, a wonderful complexity to Bradley, which is very much apparent in, in Adam. Uh, people are not always one thing. They're not always easily black or easily white or... Or uh, and and so that uh, dichotomy in the character, I thought Bradley could really bring to uh, to light in his performance. It's a very courageous performance and, and courageous to take the part on because it not only does it require you know a, a, a certain kind of performance, a com complex and difficult character to play, because um, he's not immediately likable person. Um, it requires technical skill and a kind of a commitment to technical skill. Uh, the, these Michelin chefs, these, you know, highly regarded chefs are artisans. They are, they have, you know, 10, 15, 20 years of professional training uh, to even be able to kind of do the parts of what they do that are just a craft, much less the next part, which is to be really extraordinary or to, uh, to excel in some way that draws a lot of attention. The work environment itself in the shooting of it is dangerous. Uh, there are real pans and real heat and, and, uh, and the stoves are going and everybody was getting burned and cut and lots of stuff flying around, uh, which was one of the things that when I went and started doing the research that I was uh, surprised I hadn't really thought about before. But when you look at the arms of any of these young chefs or the chefs in these kitchens, you know, they're covered with burns and cuts and... You know, and it's a very physical kind of masculine world, not to suggest there aren't a lot of wonderful uh, female chefs who are in it, but it's a, it, it reminded me much more of, uh, of iron workers than it did of what I kind of had in my mind of Michelin chefs with little hats wandering around. It's, <clears throat> it's, um, it's, very, uh, it's actually very dangerous, and we had a number of people get hurt, uh, you know, in minor ways, but minor, very painful ways during the shooting. You know, Sienna was a real trooper because, uh, you know, she hadn't done it a lot before and she was on one of the most difficult stations in the kitchen on the fish station um, throughout the shoot with, and she has burns all over her hands and just stayed in there and kept banging away. So it was a lot for all of them to take on when they committed to it. We, we warned them that it was going to be, um, 
you know, it was not going to be uh, as simple as they imagined, and it wasn't. Sienna spent a tremendous amount of time in Marcus's kitchen along with Sam and, uh, and Bradley when he was in town. He would come in and out because uh, he was shooting another film. Uh, you know, um, Omar spent a lot of time in a kitchen in France, and, uh, and Ricardo's already a chef. So, uh, you know, it, I, I kind of came into this thinking that I knew how to cook, and people would ask me, do you cook? And I would say yes, and, and now having been involved in a project for about a year and spent all this time in kitchens, I, I don't cook. I really know nothing about it. It's an extraordinary talent, um, very difficult, a craft to, to master. You know, I wouldn't have done it without a Michelin-starred chef who was prepared to be involved because I don't know what it is and, and, and what goes into it, what's required, or to, how even to design the dishes. And, you know, we, we designed dozens of dishes. Uh, Marcus and his team uh, designed dozens of dishes for the film uh, that we then had to duplicate over and over and over again as if we had a real service. And there were a lot of days where we basically did run a restaurant uh, on stage. Um, and put out, you know, 50, 60, 80 meals, Michelin, hope for Michelin quality looking meals. Nobody had to eat them. Um, although a lot of us did kind of off, off camera. <clears throat> and, uh, but I never would have thought of doing it without, without Marcus, uh, you know, without a, a Michelin star chef who's along because they really know what it is. In the same way that, um, you know, the years that I've been doing various things in television, when we did ER, we had uh, four doctors who were full time on staff with us every minute when we were shooting. Uh, and everyone who was around us were physicians who didn't have speaking roles. And in the same way, everyone in the kitchen for this who doesn't have a speaking role, or, and there are about eight or nine of them, are actually chefs. There are tremendous parallels between kitchen and film set, not, not the least of which are just the hours. You know, the, the kitchens um, in these restaurants run extremely long hours. People work very long hours. They're pressured environments. <clears throat> there are periods of extraordinary preparation and vague boredom that are then <laughs> immediately followed by extraordinarily stressful periods of two, three, four hours where things have to get done and have to get done right, or there are great financial consequences to not getting it done right. Um, and there is that sense of we all got something done together. You know, none of it can be done on a film set or in a kitchen. No one person does everything. And without everyone kind of operating in concert and, and unison and understanding what, and trusting what everybody else is doing, uh, you, you can't get it done. And, that's, and there are exactly those parallels that everyone sort of felt pretty early on once we got into the kitchen was like, oh, this is everybody depending upon everybody else. The choreography of it, the sense of where you have to be in the kitchen <clears throat> and knowing exactly where everyone else is is very similar to what's going on on film sets all the time. You know, it gave us the opportunity to go out and really just cast some wonderful actors, people that I really admired in these parts. You know, uh, Sienna, obviously, who's, you know, extraordinarily talented and, uh, and is wonderful in the part of Helene. Uh, Omar Sy, you know, who I had, uh, had loved his previous work, um, who comes in to do Michelle. And uh, Emma Thompson, who plays uh, the uh, psychologist that, uh, that he goes to see. Uh, Ricardo Scarmaccio, who's I've admired ever since uh, Best of Youth and and you know any number of other of his other films, who comes in to play Max. Uh, it it was just one of those experiences of having this great uh, group of actors around Uma Thurman, who came and and worked for us, and she plays a wonderful part. And so we, <clears throat> you know, just suddenly started to have this kind of remarkable group of people. Um, and, you know, and it ended up including Alicia uh, Vikander, who uh, I love her work. And, and, you know, she worked her whole schedule out to be able to come into it and work with us for a few days. So we just ended up with this sort of sense of everybody we asked came to do it. And, uh, you know, and, and for a director to be able to work with, you know, day after day to go to the set and know that you're going to work with extraordinary actors is a great, uh, great privilege and very exciting. I hope that people come to see it and say, well, I believed everything about this world that I saw today. And it's a world that I didn't know that much about. Um, you know, you, one of the dangers in, in doing these is that you, that you do something that people come to think that that's the only way that the, that, that world exists. Um, but 
I have to say that the research that Steve did and then the uh, Knight did and then the research that I did and Bradley and others, we found that the things that were in the scripts and that came into the scripts were were a bit universal to the experiences of of uh, of people. You know, the, the chefs are under tremendous pressure. The people who work in the kitchens have very few uh, hours off. They oftentimes work from 7 in the morning till 1 o'clock at night and then are back in the kitchens at 7 o'clock in the morning the next day, day after day. Um, and it makes for very high-pressured work environments in which there's a lot of tension and stress. And I thought some of it was probably exaggerated, you know, on television when you see, like, Gordon Ramsay screaming at people or whatever. But the stories that I actually heard as I did research across all different kinds of restaurants um, were really sort of extraordinary about, you know, the fights and the screaming and the tears and the love affairs and the, you know, because you're in a heightened, this heightened environment of stress.